Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what skills you need to learn to break into the robotics industry, advance your career, and get to the next level. If you don't know who I am, my name is Liz. I'm the founder of Learn Robotics, and I've been helping professionals advance their careers within robotics, automation, and AI. And one of the most common questions I get is, what skills should I learn? So today we're going to walk through my exact process on how to figure out what I'm going to study, what skills I need to know to come in and be a strong candidate for my next robotics job. So let's hop right into it. I put together this document. If you'd like a copy of this document, just DM me the word plan on Instagram and I'll, I'll send it right over to you. So what we're going to be talking about today is a combination of what skills do you need and what you're going to be doing with those skills to advance your career. So a lot of times when people come to me for my mentorship program, they're trying to get into a new career within the robotics market and they're trying to figure out, okay, well, what skills do I need to learn so that when I go in for the interview, I'm confident and I can speak to experience and then I can get the job. So what we need to do is we need to start with the end in mind. So the skill isn't valuable by itself without an application. So if you don't know what you're using robotics for, then it's gonna be really difficult to find that career move because companies are paying you to help them solve a problem. And so if you don't know what their problem is and you don't know why you're using the technology or why you're using robotics to do that, then it's gonna be really hard to communicate that to the employer. So what you wanna do is you wanna look for job descriptions that are within companies or fields that you're interested in. Because these job descriptions, they're gonna tell you the skills that you need to know for that particular role. So then you can figure out what, this, what skills to learn, and then you can use that kind of as your training plan. Now, because I've been in the industry so long, usually when I'm working with clients, if they tell me they wanna work, let's say in industrial automation, then I can help them kind of navigate, okay, you need to learn PLC programming, you need to learn pendant training, you need to understand work cell design, you need to know what you're manufacturing, what is the process? So then we can kind of map everything out from there. But if you're not as familiar with the market, I would start with the job description. So look at some of those jobs that you're interested in, read through them and start to see what trends and what skills keep popping up. Because odds are, if you learn those skills and you learn those tools, then you'll be a valuable, a valuable candidate moving forward with that role. The other piece is robotics is a sophisticated tool. It's not a des destination. So like without the application, robots are useless. And this goes back to Gaul's law, which is like simple systems. So every complex system is made from a simple system. And so you need to understand like the, the simple system first before you get into complex systems. If there's a simpler way to do something, then you should do that before making things more complicated. And robotics is no exception. And you can check out some of my other videos. Um, they should be on the playlist either on the side on YouTube or you can click the link below in the description. I'll leave some videos around market responsibilities and the environment. I did a whiteboard style training on this. You wanna maximize these variables so that you can increase your income. So money and these three variables, market, responsibilities, environment, they are directly proportional. So if you maximize all three, you will make more money. And three key points. You want to choose a sector where robotics already exists. So don't try to like go in and like make robots for something new. It's gonna be much harder to do that. Um, you want to choose a growing and not dying sector. So you can't save like a failing business model or a failing business with robots because there's a lot of costs associated with adopting the new technology. So you want to go into a company that has robots already or is aware of using automation and they're on board with using automation and they're growing and they have the budget to actually invest in the technology. So robots, they're more expensive than most engineers realize. And I've worked on projects where they've spent 5 million, 10 million, 50 million, $100 million just to develop automation tools to make things safer, to make things faster, to reduce costs, to improve quality. And they're willing to invest the money if there's a return on their investment. And so you have to understand like there's a lot of money being spent in this space. And so you wanna get into a company that understands that already so that you're not trying to convince them of this and you can actually just get off to the races and start working on the technology versus trying to you know, sell them into the business of using robots. So here is my three-step process. We're gonna be talking about um, deconstructing, again, reverse engineering what you wanna be doing in the industry. So you, you need to start with the end in mind. So what sector do you wanna be in? Let's say you could say like aerospace. And then you may wanna clarify that even further. So I wanna work um, on engines. And then I wanna work on commercial engines. Um, and I wanna be part of the manufacturing and production. You know, So I wanna be actually on the floor making these components for engines. And then maybe we could even, we could be even more specific. Uh, and I'm, I'm like kind of laughing here because this is like actually a role that I had. So I used to work for blades and discs um, doing manufacturing production for, I think we might've had some military, but I, I was more familiar with the commercial engines um, from a previous role that I had. And um, we actually used robots to do a spraying process 
um, for this. And so what you can start to do is get really clear on, okay, where do I want to be in the market? Like what kind of uh, company do I want to be at? What kind of industry do I want to be in? What is the technology? And if you can get really specific like this, then this is going to guide a lot of the other decisions. Um, and then like in the back of your mind, you can be like, okay, well, what companies do this? Okay, well, who are the engine manufacturers? We've got Brett and Whitney. We've got um, GE. You know, and so then it's just kind of like, okay, figuring out where, where do we go? And then what specifically do you want to be doing? So now that we know kind of where we fall, what do we want to be doing? The nearer, the better. Do we want to try to find ways where we can be more software focused, mechanical focused, systems focused? And so like I, when I was there, I was more systems focused. Um, my job was to handle a lot of the robotics and automation systems and, and work cells that were already there. So then it's just like, okay, I want to do like more industrial robots. I want to be part of uh, work cell. Uh, design and setup, so like factory acceptance testing, um, site acceptance testing, like working with, uh, let's just say, system integrators. Um, a lot of times this rolls up to like CapEx, so capital uh, expenses where they're making, so this is sometimes facilities, they're making upgrades to their factory so that they can actually bring in the automation. And then a lot of times this ties into digital transformation. So these are some of the areas. Okay, so what do you specifically want to be doing? And then do you want to be more tactical or do you want to be more strategic? So do you want to actually focus on the strategy of how are we rolling this out? and How does this impact the company's profit? Or do you want to be like, I want to sit here and program these robots and I want to be responsible for teaching the uh, operators how to use it um, and something, something along those lines. So you have to kind of decide, am I going to be hands-on tactics with the tech or am I going to be more strategic around the decision making of how this technology is being deployed? So for example, I've got a couple of them here. We've got like the corporate ladder. So a lot of times engineers, they'll do like, um, if they wanna go more corporate ladder in leadership, which was a program that I was in, they'll do like engineering, then they'll do like operations, then they can potentially become a GM and then a director and then a VP. So that's kind of like what that looks like. Um, and obviously there's intermediary steps here. This is very simplified. Um, the other path could be engineer, they could become a consultant, they can get into entrepreneurship, they can start their own business, which is kind of what I've done in, in my own career growth. Or you could be that traditional engineer where you just want to get really good and become an SME or subject matter expert in a particular technology. So you could be an engineer, then you become like engineer two, engineer three, senior engineer. You could become the engineering fellow. Um, and so you could go that traditional engineering route. So you want to kind of get an understanding of like your personality and like what you want for yourself, because then this will help you just determine, okay, cool. So I want to stay system sides, but I want to be like part of the actual build team for, you know, work, cell design and setup. I want to be more hands-on with the equipment. I want to be, you know, uh, part of the programming and debug and troubleshooting and adding new features. So that could be actual like hands-on with the uh, with the tech, with the systems, with the robots, actually doing some programming and like debug and troubleshoot and upgrades. Or you could be more on this side of it, same project where you're managing the data from these work cells to make business decisions so that you can meet, you know, um, you know, more profitability, higher throughput, better customer satisfaction, whatever those metrics are. And I've seen both sides of this. I've been on both sides of this. So you, what you need to do is you need to figure out what specifically you want to be doing. And then this kind of adds to your list. So now you're starting to build out this roadmap where you can start to see, I'm going to highlight these key components because this is going to dictate what skills you need to learn. So now you've figured all of this out and you kind of know where you want to end up. Let's just say you want to do more of this route. We're going to be part of the manufacturing. I'm going to put like, here's, here's like our example here. You want to do engineering. You want to do manufacturing. You want to do um, controls um, and automation. Engineer, maybe your lead. And maybe that's kind of like your, your next like three-ish years, three to five years. That's your growth trajectory. So we'll just hire highlight this because this is a common path. That's why I wanted to put it on here. Um, and if you haven't seen my video on industrial robots versus research robots, there'll be probably a card or something that you can check out. Open that up in a new tab um, so that you still can watch this video, but um, that'll give you more insight on the different like kind of sides of robotics. And now you need to figure out where you're located. So do you want to be in a major city? Do you want to be in a suburb? Um, again, maximizing the variables. If you are in the major city where there's more population, there's more money being spent, you're going to make more. Um, Whereas if you're in a suburb, you're going to make less. So when I was in this role, um, I was actually more in a suburb than I was in a major city. So the salary there was a little bit lower because the cost of living was lower. Um, so it, it's kind of all proportional. You've got to just decide what, what kind of environment you want to be in. So major city or suburb, 
that's going to be kind of where the business is located. And then what is the size of the business? So who are you working for? So, you know, Pratt and Whitney is going to pay more than, you know, Bob's engineering company that, um, you know, is like a local, a local business, you know, so you've got to kind of understand the unit economics of what can that company afford to pay for what I'm doing. And so generally a corporation is going to be able to have more funding than a local business. And in our case, um, with this model, we're looking at a corporation. And then I even put in some examples. So like who? So who, who are some good fits? Um, Pratt and Whitney, General Electric, so GE. You could look at other like engine companies that meet criteria. And that's going to kind of, let's add this to our, our list here. We'll highlight that. And as you can start to see, we're finally building out like kind of like this root cause analysis for our skill development. And because we've done this, this almost guarantees that the skills you are learning will actually be useful and will help you propel your career versus just picking up more skills and not knowing what to do with them later. So rather than trying to fit your resume into a future job, you're taking the job and you're, you're doing what they want you to do, right? So then that inherently makes it easier for you to then advance your career. Uh, so then job description. So I, I kind of have in my mind like this mental model, and that's why I like to share this with you guys of like what skills do you need to learn? If you are unfamiliar and you're just starting out, spend some time reading job descriptions that match this criteria. Look up engine companies. Like if you don't even know, look up the engine companies, see what they're about, see if maybe there are startups that are that are coming up with engine technologies, see if there are other applications within aerospace. So really the cool part about this is now you've got these key points, which we can put into a step five, pile your map. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab all of this so that we have really a clear definition of what we're trying to accomplish. And now what we can do is we can focus on, okay, now we know what we're doing. We can find the right skills that match this map, right? So it's just like when you're building a home, you, you need to buy certain equipment and, and certain um, materials and things like that. You need to hire subcontractors. It's like you, you wouldn't do all of that before you had the blueprint. So this is why I like to have it of everything all mapped out. So now what we can do is we can, we've got our map. We've got, we've got aerospace engines, commercial, like you can kind of see how this goes. So now we've got kind of our key, what I like to call like profiles or like what we're actually doing, like the competencies, what we need to be good at. So let me actually make these red. So we've got industrial robots. We've got work, work cell design and setup. We've got potentially understanding CapEx and facilities and like how that all works. If you want to get into that side of it and then digital transformation. If you want to get more into the business analytics and decision-making, um, you can go that route as well. So let's just do industrial robots. I don't want this video to be too, too long, but what I would do is I would start to decompose what, what this all means, okay? And a lot of times this is the tools that you use. They're gonna be dictated by the company. Like you're not gonna be able to come in and say, hey, I wanna use this particular tool. They're gonna be telling you like, we're, we're a Rockwell facility, like we're only using control logics. So you kind of have to go with that. Um, so industrial robots, we have the actual robot arms. We've got different kinds of robot arms. We've got, are they just the standard, um, you know, pick and place robot arms? Are they collaborative? So you may want to know like, okay, are we using like Phoenix, or are we using like Universal? And you're going to want to ask these questions. So you're going to need to figure out what does the factory use? Because you don't want to learn like the Phoenix teach pendant programming if all the other robots are like Motomans. Like you want to use, you want to learn the platform that the facility uses and get really good at that because there's no benefit to learning something different. Now, what I will say is, let's say you have like Moto Man experience, but you don't have Fanuc experience, that's totally okay, because like some of that is transferable, but it's just it just makes things easier for you. Like if you have to choose one, choose whatever the facility, like what kind of factory they are, and get good at that. The same is true for like PLCs. So I'm gonna put PLCs in here. Um, like I mentioned before, like if they're a Rockwell plant, you're gonna wanna learn like Studio 5000. Like don't go learn, don't go learning like uh, Codasys or some other, framework, go learn whatever they tell you that they use, uh, because that's going to be more valuable for, for you. Um, so are they Rockwell? Are they Siemens? Do they use Code Assist? I haven't seen Code Assist much in the States, in the States, but a lot of like European factories will use it. Um, and then you're going to want to know, okay, well, are they programming in like function block or structured text or ladder logic? And a lot of times it is ladder logic. Uh, ladder logic, um, you're gonna wanna learn that. And so as you start to decompose this, now we're actually getting to the root of what the actual skills are, which is the answer to today's video. So if you're a person and you wanna get into industrial automation, let's say in aerospace, working in manufacturing, and you wanna focus more on the system sides and grow your career more on the hands-on, uh, you know, developing robots that actually make parts or do production work, 
then you're going to probably need to learn about robot arms. You're going to probably need to learn some brands like Fanuc or Universal, depending on what you're doing. You're going to probably need to learn PLC programming. So that would be like in studio. And you're probably going to need to learn Lauder logic. And a lot of this, like I said, comes back to what does the factory use? So now you've, you've got kind of the skills arsenal. And I would almost go out on a limb and say that the job description for somebody working as a manufacturing engineer or manufacturing and automation engineer in a facility like this, this is what the job description is going to say, something along these lines. Um, and so this is this is kind of my methodology when people ask me, like, what, sh what skills should I learn is do this process. And I know it's a roundabout way to get to the answer, but it will give you the answer um, if you go through this. And then you can take this and create a study plan. OK, cool. Now I need to learn teach pendant programming. I need to learn how to actually um, write the software in the pendant. I need to understand how do I connect the controller, the robot controller, to the PLC, to the conveyor, to the sensors. And you can start to expand your, your knowledge based on this ecosystem. So then you can even do the same for work cells to set up and design. What kind of software and tools or what kind of system integrators am I using? Am I collaborating with? What are their best practices? What is kind of the standard that we're using? And then go ahead and start learning, learning their technologies. They might be big on using um, AutoCAD. So like you're mapping out the facility and the layout, where am I putting my power? Where am I putting my pneumatics? Where am I putting controllers? Where are the, where is the actual, um, this is a big one, like the safety, safety guarding. Where am I putting all of that? Okay, well then safety guarding, it's like, might need to brush up on your ANSI RIA background because there's a whole bunch of regulations around um, safety regarding robots and uh, safety in the work cell. It may also be uh, what are the SOPs? So what are the standard operating procedures? What is the documentation and training so that operators can use the cell? So if they're running this machinery and we need to be making sure that it's producing parts every you know hour if it's a lower volume system, who's running that? How do they use it? How do they facilitate that use? So you can kind of see me like kind of riffing here with some of these different skills, but this is really what I would recommend doing. And I would use this, use the job description and use your interests to make guided decisions on your learning trajectory. Don't just go and start learning a bunch of software and tools. There are too many of them in the industry. And if you pick the wrong one, it's not going to be as valuable as if you walk into, let's say, a Pratt & Whitney and you're saying like, no, I already know Fanuc, I already know um, Studio 5000 versus you saying, you know, C++ programming, because I can guarantee you C++ programming in this particular role is not going to be as valuable. Um, so you need to know kind of the context in which um, you're trying to make that move and where you want to end up. So that is my methodology. If this was helpful for you, please hit that like button. I'm trying to share with you kind of my process. I didn't realize this wasn't intuitive until I started talking to clients about it. I just thought people knew this. Um, I thought people were doing this and that's how they were advancing their career. And I realized that's not what people are doing. People are trying to take classes and then fit the classes into the job. Um, when in reality, it's much easier if you start with where you want to end up and reverse engineer it backwards and then figure out what skills are relevant to that career move. We do a lot of this more specifically and personally to your background in my mentorship program. So if that's something you're interested in, I have a 12 minute bonus training in the description below. You can take that training, see if that resonates with you, see if we're a good fit to get to work together. And if you, you wanna move forward, there are instructions on how to submit your application for my mentorship program. This is where I'm gonna work with you over the next 90 days and guide you through this entire process so you can move out of your current engineering role and into the next level or the next chapter in robotics, automation, and AI. So basically a calibrated version of this process with feedback, accountability, and my thoughts to help you make that move a lot faster. Now, if you're not convinced that I'm a good fit to be your mentor, that's totally okay too. Here are some more videos that you can check out and I'll see you next time.